Thank you all for joining um, another edition of 30 Minutes Maps. Um, great to have you all here and see a number of questions come through as always. Um, I'm actually happy to announce that uh, today we'll be launching the new Futureverse uh, newsletter, which kind of takes over from the previous Fluff World Probably Nothing. Um, that will be going live shortly uh, under the happening section of the Futureverse website, um, the new F News series. Uh, it will be um, it will be um, currently just hosted under that happening section, but we're building out its own section for it um, so that it will kind of exist along all of our content um, through a lot of the updates that we're putting into the website, which will uh, include things like the uh, community calendar and a, um, a home for some of the new Futurist content uh, that we're launching over the next few weeks and months. Yeah, that's really awesome because there's so much going on, but until you see it broken down, you know, just in black and white in front of you going through all the amazing things that are going on, it doesn't really resonate. You can look back over it and it'll be easier to bring new people in the community up to speed on just how much has been happening here. So that's awesome. Okay, the first question I've got for you, mate, and it's a big one because it's regarding how we figure out if Quest 3 has been achieved. How do we know if that's been completed um, and what steps should we take? So, yeah, I mean, that was a really key piece of feedback um, that we got through this uh, whole process was that considering the number of steps that are involved with this quest, um, the, I mean, the, the dashboard itself within Future Pass, um, you know, never with previous quests updated in real time to show that it had been completed. Um, but we understand, you know, and see the need for it to do so when we have quests like this one, which have you know a number of steps um to complete and especially when there have been some kind of ux um issues around completing those now fortunately the um mark team have been working diligent to resolve resolve all of these issues and uh we we are working to build in that functionality into the future first dashboard that will automatically update to show that you've completed the quest in real time. Um, but unfortunately, that isn't going to be something that we're going to have live before the end of this quest. Um, but we'll be posting some stuff um, to really kind of show how to go through and make sure you've done all those steps. And actually, uh, I think it was Schiller posted um, an, a video yesterday, which was really good and walked through all of those steps. So if you haven't seen that one, Go and check it out. Um, if you're, I think one of the main parts that people struggled with was the video upload, um, and also the fact that videos weren't showing up under um, under your account. Uh, although that that is now fixed. So if you were wondering whether you had actually successfully uploaded a video or not, you can actually just go and check um, under your kind of account activity. There's a videos tab, and it will show your successfully uploaded videos in there. Yeah, shout out for Shilla for um, getting in early for content creator of the month for this month because that was a really great video, just simply two minutes long, showing the different steps that are involved. If you haven't seen it, have a look. It's certainly in my Twitter feed or X feed. Now, the next question. Will we be implementing a future score leaderboard? Um, so this, this was uh, never officially on our roadmap and it was um, something that came through as a community suggestion um we still don't have it on our roadmap just because we're really focused on more key functionality um updates like integration with some wallet um updated bridging all of that sort of stuff so it's something that we're, we're still considering and it's kind of in the backlog of features um that we're looking at but we we haven't committed to it at this stage um it's better for us to actually focus on the key development of features um around you know more usability more functionality within uh future pass and especially things you know like the the zum xrpl integration um and brit you know allowing people to actually bridge over all of their assets yeah it's really important to remember i can feel a meme coming on here it's not the size of your future score but it's how you use it so <laughs> moving right along now we were told that um that 
FIFA or AFA would be one of the main games that was going to be coming out shortly. So this is for the AFA, AFA All-Stars. And there's going to be four mini games as well. Now, obviously, FIFA has delayed this, but is there any news on the timeline regarding to when we might see it? Um, so, so, I mean, obviously, there's been a, a, a few pivots since those initial comms were put out, what, sort of two years ago or so. Um, of course, FIFA being a massive one and the partnership there was, you know, too big of an opportunity for us to to ignore. But we are still very much committed to delivering you know, a range of experiences for, for that brand. Um, I can't speak to timelines at all. Um, as always, you know, these will come directly from the product teams. But yes, that is something that we're still committed to. Cool. I can see these questions are being um, changed in the order as I'm speaking. So sorry for asking that one out of turn. All right. Are future Quest rewards likely to be reduced in amounts compared to Quest 1 to limit the root supply if the sex is delayed for some reason? Obviously, you don't want to release too much root supply before trading kicks off. Well, yeah. I mean, the, the amount that we awarded for the first Quest was a lot. Um, and we're certainly not going to be doing that amount for every quest. I think if we if we did, we would only actually be able to do like 20 quests. Um, so expect the rewards to vary significantly uh, between quests and especially compared when it comes to the the relevant um, or the relative work involved to complete those quests. Um, but for us, yeah, quest one, you know, the large root reward tied to that was really to just kickstart the token distribution and reward those who were actively participating. Um, there will be others that you know may have large distributions similar to that amount, um, but many of them will be uh, you know much smaller by comparison. Still a healthy amount of root though. I'm really interested in the answer for this next question too, and it's a theoretical question. We should okay. be getting future. <laughs> yeah, we should be getting future score points for completing quests. Let's say our future score will grow five points with every quest completed. What if someone completes five quests and then sells all their NFTs? Will they still have the future score bound to their future past? So, um, yes, you are right that some quests will um, increase your future score, but not all of them. And it's an important distinction to make here because if, if, if just completing a future uh, if just completing a quest increased your future score, then it would be very easily bottable um, by, you know, by the masses for people to just farm root tokens. So when it comes to certain quests, which, and you'll see some of them come through soon, which um, just completing the quest itself will actually increase your future score. Um, it's important that those are ones that require some kind of, uh, associated cost um, because otherwise they can just be farmed in bulk um, but there are some coming that will be you know more easy to uh, engage and actually just increase your future score itself whereas the current ones the fu your future score is still determined primarily by your uh, the collectibles that you hold and the various um, factors that influence that um, and then the root distribution is just uh, kind of calculated from that. Yeah, and this one's really important because we want to encourage growth within the ecosystem without people having to own the Futureverse assets that we all love and enjoy. So there's got to be other ways to bring them in, onboard them and get them to participate. But we've got to be very careful about the way we do that. Now we're um, getting into a, a, the next Legends question and it's quite a long one. All right. So the next Legends has passed its one year mint anniversary. The reason back was due to our partnerships for their wanting a firm date. Can you speak to that mm -hmm. regarding the partnerships? And um, also any update on gameplay or information around authentic brands? Um, so I guess first and foremost, I think it's important to provide some context here um, as I feel like there's often a kind of mis misunderstanding, especially within this industry of how long game development actually takes. It takes a long time to develop a game, and it's very, very rare to see a game launch in less than a year. Um, so while it might feel like it's been a, a long time in the in this grand scheme of actual game development, it really hasn't. Um, and I mean, when they've said here that you know um, 
we can't actually use the NFTs at all. Well, actually, yes, you can. You can go onto them. You can download them in a range of formats. Um, there's more functionality for TNL NFTs even in this stage before game launch than almost any other NFT in the market, to be honest, if we look at what most other NFTs uh, offer. But um, when we talk about you know other projects in the industry, some have managed to build and launch games in various stages, really only, you know, one or two from what I've seen um, since minting, you know, in the last couple of years. Uh, but these are generally, you know, some new form of just walled garden. They're not really an open and interoperable experience. And that's where, as Futureverse, our focus has been on building our games using interoperable architecture, which means, you know, we need to get those foundations right. <clears throat> I just also want to reiterate that it's not my place here in these 30 minutes max to front run official product comms. Those will come out from the product teams themselves and the product marketing teams. Um, but as the latest, uh, the last official comms for TNL stated, we're targeting a launch um, of some gameplay by the end of this year. That That is still very much the case. Um, and you'll see some updates on the TNL side very soon. Uh, including something definitely this month. Um, what you will see actually with these updates coming through TNL is us starting to show off some of that foundational tech um, that I just discussed, uh, really around like a lot of the swappables and asset registry. Uh, sorry, one sec. My phone just locked. Did I? Did you lose me or was I still there? No, we no, we got you, no, no, you okay. better. Cool. Um, yes, yeah, so what you will see with those updates with TNL is us starting to show off a lot of this foundational tech that we've been developing. So, you know, the swappables, engine, asset registry, all of these sorts of things that are really key for that kind of interoperability framework. Um, in terms of the, you know, partnership side with ABG, um, how that partnership strategy works, that's not something that we are ever going to publicly discuss that's you know there's a confidential partnership um decisions a bit of interaction with our tnl stars uh coming up this month sweet okay mm -hmm. can can you please explain the minting process for the fifa ai league on the xrpl in relation to the root network a lot of a lot of talk about this recently especially outside our community what have you got yeah so um just to kind of reiterate how where I had answered this um, in one of the other channels. So the FIFA collectibles were minted on uh, the root network using our XLS20 integration, which creates the token ID on XRPL and the NFT on TRN to ensure compatibility. So it's an automated process which mints across both networks at the same time. Now, the reason the comms have highlighted the XRPL side is because this is a showcase to the XRP community around the functionality and integration with the root network. And it's really important for us to, to highlight that as, you know, us being a key use case for XRP um, and the XRPL community. Um, and we want to, as we continue to build out more and more functionality, more and more integration, like, you know, the ZUM int uh, integration that I mentioned just before, it's really important that we continue to present ourselves as a uh, as a home for this community to extend into. Um, there will be, I think some people have pointed out that, you know, some of the numbers don't correlate at the moment, um, and there'll be plenty more of the AI League collectibles being minted over time. Um, this is an ongoing process, and we do plan to allow people to unlock their AI League collectibles for trading um, at some point in the the near future. Cool. All right, a little bit of a Born Ready question here. Now, Born Ready was formed to accelerate projects they're going to be building on TRN. How is Sanctum connected to the Futureverse or the Root Network? How does it fit into that whole Born Ready strategy to support us building out? Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm not a representative of Born Ready, so I can't really speak, you know, in any f f official capacity for Born Ready. Um, but as always, you know, the plan with that fund is to find great products that fit into the wider Futureverse version um, and support them in their development to fast track um, and build out this network effect of products on the root network. 
So, I mean, many of you will have seen the announcement with Sanctum. Um, they have a really great product and there's a very clear kind of use case for it within the wider Futureverse ecosystem, especially when we look at, you know, part of our vision being around the uh, democratization and decentralization of artificial intelligence. Um, and I would very much expect this to become a core offering um, of the wider kind of Futureverse toolkit. Yeah, our AI community is certainly one of the fastest growing as we um, brought it out. Oh, this one, David and Jeff. Okay. I'd love to hear from David and Jeff at some point. Uh, we missed their AMAs and dropping all their knowledge. What are they working on? What are they up to? What have you got? Um, so David is uh, running our innovation department as chief innovation officer. Um, he and his team of AI scientists um, and, and Jesse Metcalf as well as the, the kind of creative spanner in the works over there to, to see what madness he can create of the, the deep tech that they're building. Um, and Jeff is running our network and game economies, um, which is, if you've ever met Jeff, you'll know that's the perfect place for him. Um, Jeff does actually host regular AMAs uh, for Otto, um, but I guess uh, this is a good point to highlight, um, you know, on the topic of comms, I previously mentioned that we are working towards launching a new Futureverse content series. Um, we're actually getting really close to taking this live um, and you'll expect to see some official comms um, relating to this later this month. Uh, the format will be at least twice a month. The uh, One will be a kind of broad update on all things Futureverse, which in most cases will be hosted by either Aaron, Shara, or both of them. Um, and one which will be more of a deep dive into tech and product. Uh, those deep dive ones will feature, you know, the likes of Marco, David, uh, and kind of other key people across leadership and Futureverse. And it's part of our strategy to start really highlighting um, a lot of the other great minds that we have in key leadership positions um, across the whole the whole Futureverse team. So as part of that as well, we'll be putting out, um, as I said, some official comms and also a way for you guys to help dictate the actual content strategy on what it is that we actually want or what it is that you guys actually want to hear from especially when it comes to those deep dives i know there's been a lot of questions around you know root network architecture um ai gamification silo protocol all these sorts of things so this will really be an opportunity for you guys to to kind of say you know we really want to know more or get really stuck into this specific area um and and we'll present that as a as a deep dive. If you're really missing Jeff, you can always come in and hang out with me and Mo Fluff on the Auto Spaces AMA. It's at the end of every month. We do it. If you like Jeff's long answers, he has plenty of them. And we cover all things like defy. So um you can always come and join us there. All right, are we getting close to being able to bridge our assets to root so we can start trading them DGN style? on Mark using Root? Uh, yes, so that is one of the key features that um, I mentioned previously is, is currently being worked on for um, like the FuturePass dashboard. Uh, we obviously want to make sure bridging to the Root network is as easy as possible. And there's a couple key use cases around certain functionality and certain collections um, that we'll be highlighting through this process. Um, expect to see all of the um, the bridging of all of our ecosystem collections um, as I think would say by the end of this year um, should be in place or at the very worst case, you know, by end of January. But it is one of the key features that's currently being developed. And we are looking at um, expediting the Fluff collection bridge as a kind of first showcase um, considering it is the, the Genesis collection. Ah, uh, where it all began. All right. Okay. This is the last question I've got at this stage, and it's uh, do we have a time frame for when Quest 3 root rewards will be sent out? Um, yes. So, as always, we aim to distribute the rewards for quests as soon as possible um, when it comes to the completion of the quest. With this one, 
it may take a couple extra days um, just because of the time, uh, both it being the weekend um, and also the fact that there's a few different kind of data points that need to be cross-referenced. Um, so it's not as straightforward as uh, some of the previous ones that we've done, but you know, we'll endeavor to get those rewards out as soon as possible. Great. Well, that's all I've got at this stage. So uh, if anybody in the audience has a question or anything they'd like to know, now would be a great time to raise your hand. And um, Som, do we have anyone else asking questions in Discord? Um, no, nothing relating to this. So I think if anybody wants to jump up and <clears throat> ask a question, feel free. <laughs> the one from NFT responsibly. I don't know if any of you guys have seen that meme. It's brilliant. It's like a kid being interviewed, trying to. Oh my gosh! It's yeah. You you gotta see it. And yes. Have you ever just? And then you. And when you. And then you. Have you ever? Have, just... you, have you ever had a dream that that um that you had uh that you had to you could you do you do what you what you could do so you could do what you want you wanted to do so much you could do anything. Yes. Yes, I have. Every night. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if no um, one's got any question questions. If, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I know you said with FIFA, it was kind of like a big deal to showcase to XRP. Um, we've been noticing, it seems like they've been minting in batches, and that's what's causing the vortex to go up. Um, just based on... 500,000 downloads and four characters a piece. That's at least 2 million. I think we show mm -hmm. like 800,000 so far. So is it mm -hmm. planning to continue that? I mean, I, I would imagine there is a ton more to go. And then also like are all the like attire or accessories also going to be minted? Uh, I believe so. I'm not 100% on all of the other um, kind of wearable stuff, but I, I believe that is the case. And yes, you know, the, as I mentioned before, this is an ongoing process. So um, you should expect to see those numbers continue to rise until we, well, and actually continue to rise over time as we have more and more people play and engage with that game as well. Yeah, so the more characters that are there, the more that gets minted, essentially. Yeah, yeah and, and then we have, we have uh, we're planning... Um, you know, the ability for people to kind of unlock um, their AI League collectibles for trading. Um, and this will actually play into, um, there was a point raised a while ago, a question in terms of how Asto Energy um, plays into the um, rewards or the, the, the fees spent on the AI League game. And that is still something that is being um, worked through and will kind of be taken live with the unlocking of assets for, for uh, uh, unlocking of these collectibles for trading. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Cheers. How's that Bill yeah, right? Just... Yeah. 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 Cheers, mate. <clears throat> Now, just to touch on the content creator of the month award, the way that works is I believe you need to be part of the content wizards that is in uh, in Discord. So first of all, you got to get in there and get yourself that role sorted out, then to start creating content because um, it's going to be well worth your while. Anything else you'd like to add, Alex, before we wrap it up? We're coming up on uh, 30 minutes, I think. No, I mean, I've still got a few minutes. If anyone else has anything they want to jump up and discuss. No, all right. They'll take that as um, silence is golden. Then, um, yeah. I mean, look out for that newsletter, guys. It's going to be coming out really shortly. Share it with your friends. And of course, um, as I said before, it's not the size of your future score; it's how you utilize it. So tell your friends that as well. All right. Last, last Keep telling your you, wife Alex. that as well. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I saw someone chanting "Pota." Um, just a heads up on that. We should really do another poetic giveaway at some point. Hmm. Maybe stay tuned next week. Um, but uh, we're doing an update to the POTA bridging website. Um, there's, uh, I think I was still using Wallet Connect version one. So we're just updating that to version two so that 
um, ensures full interoperability with the likes of Ledger as well. If you were a POTA, what POTA would you be? Drop your oh. answers in Discord, you know? You've got I mean, yours, haven't you? I've got mine. It's, uh, it's the Hunter S. Thompson one. That's a cool one. That is got a cool it. one. Who's got POTA Ketchum? Because that's a legendary one. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, I'm off to go vote. Uh, if you're in New Zealand, I highly suggest you do the same. Um, make your voice heard. Uh, if you're not in New Zealand, but you also have elections going on, likewise. And I'll see you all in the metaverse.